Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Breed Review. I'm Liam Murphy and today I'll be reviewing the Legoto Romagnolo. Alright, so the Leg Okay, so the Legoto Okay, the Legoto Romagnolo. That's a mouthful. Also known as, as I like to prefer to them because I'm a mushmouth, the Italian truffle dog. A very old breed, but not a lot of people know about these guys. They're not a very popular dog. Very similar to the Portuguese water dog in look. Originally used as a gun dog, as a water retriever. As you can see, they have a very typical water dog coat, which is hair, not fur. It does shed, but not a lot. Very tight curls. Their coat comes in different colors like brown, black and brown, white and brown. A lot of different colors, basically. Kind of like this coat. I'll explain the coat. I had some work being done at my house, and anytime a contractor comes by, I like to dress the pot. I don't know anything about it, but I like to pretend like I do. Oh, is it a flathead or a Phillips head? Oh, 13 millimeter. Yeah. Hey, measure twice, cut once. Two by fours, you're telling me. So, and I forgot to put the heat on in the building, so it's a little chilly out, so I'm gonna keep my jacket on if you don't mind. Today, they're still used as water retrieving dogs, not as much though as they are companion dogs. Most of the time, people get these guys just as companions. And later on, they were found very useful in finding truffles, which is a mushroom grown underground, I guess. I've never had one. I hear they're really expensive and they're really good, and people use them still to this day to find and harvest this rare mushroom, which is pretty cool. I mean, the dog's nose can you know, make you some money. Right? What do you think about that? But mostly, I would say these guys are used as mainly companion dogs. Not a very big dog, medium-sized dog, nice and small, not too little. These guys get up to about maximum 50 to 60 pounds, not much bigger than that. Very convenient for travel. They have a curly coat made up of hair, not fur. Continues to grow. As you can see, Oscar here is shaved down a bit. He's got his boys regular. He looks fantastic. They very much so resemble a Portuguese water dog. When I'm, when I'm out with these guys, a lot of times people ask me, is that a Portuguese water dog? And I go, no, it's not. Frankly, we're offended that you would ask that. He's an Italian truffle dog, Legoto Romagnolo. Look it up. Then I say, no, I'm only kidding. Calm, just stop running away, it's okay. I'm Liam, I have a YouTube dog show. Okay, so let's get into the review. All right, we're gonna start off with health. Very, very healthy dog. Not a lot of health issues with these guys. They do have some issues like hip dysplasia and things like that, although not common. They have a very long life expectancy, 14 to 16 years. That's fantastic. And I think a lot of that has to do with, one, very good breeding. These guys aren't overbred. A lot of the breeders out there have a lot of passion for this breed, and they take their time to make sure they're doing the necessary testing to ensure that they're going to have healthy puppies going forward. Assuming they're given the proper nutrition, diet, and exercise, these guys should have a very long, healthy life with not a lot of health issues. So I'm going to give them a 5 for health. Okay, now let's get into temperament. Now, like I said, a lot of these guys are used primarily as family companions, and the reason is they have a very good temperament. They, they generally get along with children, although I wouldn't say that they're the best to have with really small kids. Know what I say, they're the worst. They're kind of right in the middle. Dogs are dogs. Most dogs, in my opinion, don't mix well with really small kids. I'm talking toddlers and under. But generally, they are fine with kids. Most of the time, they're fine with other dogs. Cats even, they can get along with cats. However, as they get older, I've noticed that these guys can be a little impatient with younger dogs. So, something you want to take into consideration. I wouldn't classify them as aggressive in any way. These guys generally like to play and make friends very easily. However, like I said, as they get older, they can become a little bit impatient with puppies. And that's 90% of the dogs that I know going out there. And they like their family. They like to be around them. They do like to hang out with them. They do like to spend time with them. They can be a little aloof with strangers. If they don't know somebody coming up to the house, they're going to bark. That's about where it ends for them. They really don't have any, they really don't have a plan B. They, their plan is to bark at them, they run away. Plan B, they, oh, I don't know. Oh, it wasn't me barking, that was, uh, that was them over there, you know. But I'd say generally for their temperament, loyal, sweet, affectionate, very playful dog. Even as they get a little bit older, they maintain their playfulness, especially when it comes down to working. And they're very exuberant when they work. They, they're just happy to be out there and they really enjoy it. Temperament for these guys, I'm gonna give them a four. Okay, let's talk about activity. Definitely not the most active of the gun dogs that I've worked with. They are definitely an active breed. They definitely require a good amount of exercise, but I wouldn't put them up with like the GSPs or the Vizsla, Weimariners, Portuguese Water Dog. I just wouldn't classify them up to that level. They're a little bit less. Now, I'm not trying to say they're not an active breed. They certainly are. You're gonna have to exercise these guys daily. Again, you're not gonna be able to just do it on the weekends, but they're not the type of dog that's gonna need to accompany you on your daily 20 mile bike ride just so it doesn't tear holes in your house. 
okay? But good long walks every day. Certainly hikes would be great for these guys. Great dog for hiking. Swimming's an excellent activity with these guys. So if you have a water source nearby, that would be fantastic. That would be a great option for these guys for exercise, especially in you know your, your spring, summer, and fall. I would highly recommend that as much as you can get these guys swimming. You know, I prefer fresh water for my dogs. You can do salt water. I just worry about them ingesting the salt water and then diarrhea dumping in the back of my uh, Jeep, but that's just me. I'm a bit of a warrior, I know. Sorry, I was just thinking about it. Also, where I live, there's a lot of sharks out there. I take my dogs to the beach a lot, but I don't let them swim in the water. I just, I'm petrified of sharks. I don't go past my ankles. You're not getting me. People are like, come on in, it's fine. They're not gonna get you. Oh yeah, yeah, and now they're not gonna get me because they don't have legs and they can't walk up on shore and grab me. I wouldn't take these guys on a lot of long runs or heavy impact activities such as trail running, mountain biking, things like that. They don't make the greatest fit for those types. But a good long hike, good day of swimming certainly is enough for these guys. I'm gonna give them a 3.5 for activity. Okay, so let's talk about trainability. Extremely intelligent dog, very, very smart. Now that doesn't mean they come out of the box that way. You have to make sure that you get them into training right away when they're young. Because here's the thing, if you don't, these guys will walk all over you. They can be very mischievous. Like I said, they're very smart, they can learn a multitude of different things, but you just have to utilize it. They are a working dog, don't forget. So all the training in the world isn't gonna matter if you don't exercise them. Activity and training, in my mind, all go hand in hand. Your basics, sit, stay, come, they can learn a multitude of different things. You just have to put in the time and the energy. If you don't, again, it'll be problematic. You'll have a very difficult time. I'm gonna say that there are three for training. Again, not to say that they're not smart, not to say that they can't do it, but it definitely takes the right person to be able to properly handle one of these guys. Okay, so guys, that's it. That's the Lagoto Romagnolo. Like I said, a lot of pros to these guys. Good family companion, good with other dogs. Very, very healthy breed. They live a very long time. They're not a very big dog. I'd say the main con for these guys, for most people, is gonna be their coats. Dogs with hair are very difficult to maintain. They do require quite a bit of grooming. So other than that, Really great dog. Love these guys a lot. Unique dog. Again, you don't see too many of them, which isn't a bad thing. But again, just a great dog. A lot of fun. A lot of personality on them. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I really appreciate it. This is Oscar the Lagoto Romagnolo, also known as the Italian Truffle Dog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate all the support. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button. I'd really, really appreciate it, you guys. Just having a ton of fun making these. Keep those comments coming. Keep those recommendations. We've got a long list of dogs that we're going to be doing. I hope you guys had an awesome day. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys. Come on, Bubba. I, 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 I